Hi hey, Montclair. I thought it would be really fun to do a guided drawing for our assembly this month. And because it's November and it's been pretty rainy the last couple of days, I thought we could draw a picture of a girl holding an umbrella in the rain. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little dot towards the top of my page. This is going to be the center of my umbrella. So if you notice, it's probably a hand down from the top of my paper is where I did my dot. Um, I'm going to draw lines for the umbrella and because she's going to be looking up at the sky, the lines that you see at the top are going to be a little bit more short. They're gonna be shorter than the lines on the sides and at the bottom. And what I want to do is I want to make eight different sections of my umbrella. So that's why I'm drawing eight lines. And you'll notice again, these ones are a little longer. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, perfect. So now when I connect the ends of my umbrella together, I'm gonna to draw a curved line because if you've ever looked at an umbrella, the fabric stretches because it's um, attached to the wires here. And so, that's why it's not a straight line going across. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my curved lines. And once I've done that, then I'm going to start adding some line texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with this big section right here. And I'm gonna start by just doing squiggles. And I'm just going to do several little squiggles. They can be going different directions. They don't have to be going the same way. And if you notice, I start to get to the end of the section. So then I just kind of keep going around and around and around. And then I might do some extra curve lines over here. And the point of this, or what we want to do, is we want to fill in all the space. Usually when I am talking about drawing pictures with the first graders, we talk about filling in all the white space. Don't leave any white space. Clearly we're not using any colors, but if you stand from a different uh, distance, what we want to do is not have big sections of just white with no line texture. So we want to fill in each section with different kinds of lines. So I'm going to skip a section. I'm going to go to this next one and same thing. I'm going to do round lines to squiggles or whatever you want to call these. Round and around. I'll start another one over here. Another one here. And I know sometimes I tend to go kind of fast. And if you ever need to get caught up, all you have to do is pause your video. Not a problem. Okay, I'm going to skip another section. Do some more squiggles over here. And this really does take a lot of focus. And that's why I had to turn off my TV. I was watching the news earlier and I turned it off because I really need to concentrate on what I am doing. Sometimes if I put music on, it actually helps me focus a little bit more. But I was getting distracted, so turned it off. All right, I might have another one over here. Okay, and then once I'm done with all my curved line sections, then I'm gonna look at these next four and I'm gonna do something a little different so it contrasts with the curved line. So I'm gonna do straight lines this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna draw straight lines going across and then I'm gonna do straight lines going the opposite direction so it makes a checker pattern. Okay, same thing here, straight lines. And sometimes I find myself going a little bit too fast and it starts to look a little sloppy and I have to tell myself, slow down. It's not a race. Okay, so I'm drawing lines going across the other direction. Last one. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is draw the girl's hair. And what I'm going to do is I am going to start by drawing a curved line that's angled this way because her hair is gonna be blowing in the wind. So I'm gonna do another curved line right here. Then I'm gonna start doing 
some other curved lines that connect to these curved lines. And I'm gonna do several of them because I want her hair to be blowing in the wind. Okay, so after I have kind of, um, you know, maybe five or so sections of her hair blowing in one direction, maybe I'll do one more right here. Then I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna just do curved lines that match the other lines going the same direction in each space. And this you have to go kind of slow. Okay, same thing right here. Some curved lines because I want her hair blowing in the wind. It's a blustery day outside. Some more lines here. I think maybe just one more quick little swoosh there. Okay, so there's her hair. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw her arm. So her arm is going to be about right here and I'm just gonna draw an oval for her arm. So it's kind of like here's her elbow. And then I'm gonna draw her coat. So her coat is going to flow down to about right here and kind of the same thing. It's about my hand right here is where the end of her coat's going to be. And her coat also is going to be blowing in the wind a little bit. And I'll connect it right here because her hair is blowing over her coat. All right. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw one line going down her elbow. And then I'm gonna draw some lines that connect down to the bottom of her coat. So just a few. All right. The next thing I'm gonna do is add some more line texture to my drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw angled lines that go from the end of her arm to the seam in the middle of her sleeve. So I'm going to do lines that angle. So they're not going straight across, they're not going up and down. They're angling up. And then I'm gonna do the opposite angle on this side. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the rest of her coat. I'm gonna do angled lines going one direction. And then the next section, what I'll do is I'll do angled lines going the other way. Now, if you notice you start to get a little sloppy like me, the good thing about pencil, you just erase it, no big deal. Okay, so then I'm gonna draw some more lines going the other way. And you'll notice the more you start doing these details, it gets a little easier to go a little faster. You don't wanna go too fast, but you start to get the hang of just the rhythm of drawing the lines, I guess. Okay, the last section. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw her legs, and I wanna leave room for her boots too. So I don't wanna draw her legs too long. I'm just gonna draw her legs like that so not like maybe as long as my finger okay and then i'm going to draw the top of her boot so i'm going to do a curved line for one boot curved line for the other boot i'm going to connect the boot because it goes around her leg and then her boot is going to go down on both sides and then going to draw the front part of her boot as well. And then connect. It's the same thing here. Okay, now on her leg, she's wearing tights and I think the texture I wanna do is polka dots. So I'm gonna do little polka dots along her tights on both of her legs. If you wanna do hearts or stars, up to you. All right, now her boots, I'm going to draw some sections. So I'm going to draw curved lines and it kind of at this point looks like stripes going down her boots. And then same thing with the front of her boot. I'm gonna draw some stripes and then it'll connect here. A few more stripes on this side and a few more going down, okay. And then to make even more texture, you could leave it like this, or you could do some vertical lines going across. 
and then skip a line or skip a section, draw some more, and then don't forget the front part of her boot. Okay, so here's just the first part of our drawing. If you wanna stop here, you can. If you wanna keep going, I'm gonna add even more detail. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line going across the paper. So I think my line's going to go, let's see, about, let's see, maybe like right here. And I'm just gonna do my best to make it a straight line. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw another line that is going across parallel to that first line. Parallel means it's just going the same way across my paper, same distance here and here, everywhere. And then I'm gonna draw one more line that's going across my paper like that. All right, and then I'm going to draw a circle, kind of a light circle, or I guess more of an oval, sorry, not a circle, right here. And in the middle of my oval, I am going to draw a line that goes up to about right here. And I'm gonna use the side of my paper to help me keep this line straight. So it's going to go all the way down to the middle of my oval. And then I'm gonna draw one more line that goes all the way down to the middle of my oval. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw a curved line right here. We're gonna turn this into a straight lamp. And I'm gonna erase this part that's underneath the pole. And then I'm gonna show you how to get ready for the next step. All right, the other thing I need to do is I need to erase this line right here because the pull of the lamp is going to be in front of that line. Um, let's see, I'm gonna add just a little bit of detail on the bottom by drawing a line down and a line down on both sides and then another curved line so it's raised above the sidewalk. All right, I'm gonna draw a line at the top that goes across like that. And I'm gonna make this a thick line. And then, let me pull this down a little bit. I'm going to draw a curved line that goes from here down to here and a curved line that goes from here down to here and another curved line at the top and one straight line going down the middle. So this is gonna be the lamp or the light part of the light pole. Okay, I'm gonna make this a thick line. I'm gonna make this a thick line, this a thick line, and the top a thick line. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of detail at the top by doing um, like a, I don't know what, trapezoid? And then one more thing at the top. All right. Now, how we're gonna add texture to the lamppost is we are going to draw triangles all the way down the lamppost. So one at a time, I'm doing a line going diagonal one way, then another to make lots of triangles. All the way down the pole. And again, this takes some focus and concentration and when I get down to the bottom of my pole, I'm going to go back to the top and add even more detail. So I'm going to start by doing lines going this way on the triangles on the left side of my pole. So each one's going to have some diagonal lines going down. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm gonna go back up to the top I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? 
So once I get to the bottom, I'll go back to the top and I'm gonna do more diagonal lines on the other side, but this time I'm gonna go the other direction. So if you could tell, I'm going the opposite way. On this side, all the way down to the base of the lamp. And when I get down to the base of the lamp, I want to add even more detail down there too. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so at the bottom, I'm going to draw lines going up and down all the way across. And then I'm going to start with a line there and I'm going to do lines that are going around and around and around the bottom part of the street lamp as well. Okay, and at the top I'll do some lines here too. Okay, oh sorry, I guess you couldn't see the base when I did that. So I just went around and around and around and I did some vertical lines right here. All right, so now we want to turn this into a sidewalk. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw an angled line about, I don't know, maybe like a finger's length over and over on the bottom of our paper. And if you notice, I'm trying to keep the angles about the same each time I do it. And then where it touches this line right here, I'm gonna do a line that goes straight up and down. So this is, the end of the sidewalk, the curb of the sidewalk. All right, so now, if you wanna stop here, you can, but if you wanna add even more detail, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line that starts about right here and goes across my paper. So I'm actually building a brick wall right here. I'm going to draw another straight line that's about that thick so it's like a finger's width all the way across now you really have to concentrate because it's easy to do lines that kind of start angling or aren't the same distance apart but i'm trying really hard to do about the same distance with all of my lines and i'm trying to get it to be as straight as possible because i'm not using a ruler so if you want to use your finger to help you that's fine too to make sure that you're doing the same distance between all the lines. So I'm just gonna continue to do my lines all the way down until it reaches the sidewalk. So here I am, I'm gonna continue, and then I have one more line after this. And I realize, oh, I should have probably done my lines going upward, that's okay, it doesn't matter. So here's the bottom. All right, so now I'm gonna turn this into bricks. And how I do that is I'm going to start with this first line and I'm going to draw a line going up and down and then I'm gonna skip a line. Then another line going up and down that's the same distance, then I'm gonna skip a line. And same thing here and here. And then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna do another line straight up and down and I'm gonna skip a section or a line each time. Okay, same thing. And some of these bricks are behind the girl. So then here, here she is, and so this is like two fingers, and so I'm gonna do two fingers, oop, can't see any, so two fingers over, that'll help me figure out where the next line should go. Okay, same thing. Straight lines. Okay. And then I'm gonna look at these lines down below that are blank. So this time I wanna do more straight lines going up and down, but it's going to be halfway in between the ones I just did. Whoopsie, wrong one. See, nice thing about using a pencil. You just erase. Okay, this is kind of behind the pole, so I don't really see it there. 
So more lines going here. And then same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. And then at the very top of the wall, I'm going to draw a, one more line going straight across. It's a little bit smaller than what I did at first. This is gonna be the top of the brick fence or gate or whatever you wanna call it. So if you notice down here, when I did the sidewalk, I have these angles. I'm gonna use those same angles up here too. So it's gonna make these bricks at the top of the wall look three-dimensional almost. So I'm just gonna do these curved lines at the top. All right, now if you wanna stop here, you can, or if you wanna do even more detail, I'm gonna be adding a little furry friend right here. And after that, I'm gonna be doing some detail in the sky. So my little furry friend, is going to be a little kitty that's staring at the moon. So to do this, I'm going to start by drawing his body and he's gonna be sitting on top of this fence right here, this gate. So I'm gonna draw his body just like this. And what I'm gonna to have to do is erase the lines that are behind him because he's sitting on top of the gate. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw his tail coming down and curving kind of hanging over the gate. And he's gonna be looking out at the, the moon and the stars, kind of like what the girl's doing. So I'm gonna erase all the lines that are behind his tail. And I guess I should have drawn my lines a little bit lighter, but that's okay. We're gonna be adding details, so it really doesn't matter. It'll kind of cover up this line that I'm trying to erase that you can still kind of see. And then at the top, I'm gonna to draw his head so it's going to be a circle, and then at the top, his ears. And then my details for him, I'm gonna have him wearing a little collar. I'm gonna color that in kind of solid. And then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have stripes going across. So this is gonna be a striped cat kind of like the one I have. You might have heard of him. Most people have. Rascal, because he is a rascal. All right, so I'm gonna continue to draw these lines and stripes going across, and I'm gonna have them continue on his tail. And then when his tail curves, the lines start to move with the tail too. Okay. For his head, I think I'm just gonna do just a few stripes, not too much, maybe a couple coming down here. Then I wanna make sure his whiskers are showing, so I'm gonna draw those. And I might do a few stripes going all the way across. Color in his ears a little bit. All right, so now um, the details I'm gonna do for the sky is first of all, I'm gonna have the moon shining behind the kitty. So I'm gonna draw a circle that doesn't quite fit, but it almost looks like it goes off the page a little bit. And then I think what I'll do for details here is I'm just gonna do some round circles for craters, different sizes. So this is kind of supposed to be the craters you would kind of see um, when you look up at the moon, I might do some extra lines, the curving around. Okay, so there's my moon. And then the stars, what I like to do, now, if you do stars, just do, 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 you can do your stars however you want. You could do circles for stars, the stars are hard to do. Or you could just do stars like I'm doing, any kind of stars you want to do. So I'm just going to spread my stars around my page. Fill in some of this white space. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is, kinda like we did the squiggles here, I'm going to do some larger squiggles. So it kinda looks like wind almost. And it's just in the background of my sky. And I'm gonna continue just doing some curved lines, filling in this white space. 
It doesn't need to be perfect. This kind of reminds me of a painting called Starry Night. Some of you probably have heard of that painting. It's just trying to get some lines in here to make all this kind of boring white space go away. I'll do one more swiggle right here. So then I'm just kind of drawing some lines to fill in as much as I can. And there is our sky. All right, so now we are officially done with our picture. If you want to add even more detail, you can. You could add maybe some plants growing along the sidewalk. Maybe if you want to have like a little mouse or something that's crawling along the sidewalk, sneaking by with his ears and his whiskers and his tail. You might add just any other things you can think of. If you'd rather have clouds and rain, you can do that. All sorts of things you can do. I personally don't want to color my painting in or my drawing in because I really like the look of the pencil. Um, if you do want to add a little bit of detail with the bricks, you can color in all the corners to give it a, almost like a shadowy look and that will create a little more texture too. You can do just some of them. You could do all of them. You could do none of them. So lots of other things you can do. You could maybe do a bright light in here if you wanted. Showing off some, some light because it's dark outside. You might want to do maybe some pebbles in the sidewalk. Um, it's up to you. So hopefully you enjoyed this art and I will try and do another for the next assembly because these are super fun to do. All right.